Hello, I'm Gracelyn Guile, and welcome to Gracelyn Presents Inspiring Local Nonprofits. We're so fortunate to live in this wonderful community where there are so many giving people and people who have the time and energy to help others. And I founded a nonprofit uh, in 2006, which was CUSH, Clean Up Sound in Harbors. And so I know how much effort it takes and time. So I wanted to profile this season others who have founded nonprofits that are benefiting all of us in the community. My first guest is Spike Lobdell, and he is the founder and president of New England Science and Sailing Foundation, which they call NESS, N-E-S-S for short. Welcome, Spike. It's nice to have you here. It's great to be here, Grayson, with you and, and getting a chance to talk about NESS. Well, we've um, known each other for quite some time, and um, but I would like you to tell uh, viewers a little bit about your background and how you came to found this organization. Sure. Um, I had a, probably a 30-year career in finance, and mm -hmm. in that, um, in the latter part of the career, as you know, we were all starting a yacht club, the Stony Harbor Yacht Club. Right. And in that formation, the very kind of first day, one of the things that I felt we needed to be a little bit different, I mean, clubs tend to define themselves by who they exclude versus who they include, and we wanted to be different. So we started a little community sailing program in 2002 with just 14 kids. Wow. Then later on, uh, 2004, we thought that this was a benefit for the community, so we turned it into a separate 501c3, separate foundation, mm -hmm. and then we grew from there. And so this past year, we taught 4,700 kids. Wow! Probably that's amazing. It's it's quite quite growth. Um, and but, how much staff do you have? We're about 20 full-time staff, but in the summer uh, we also have 10 AmeriCorps members that work with us in New London. I can tell you about that. Okay. And then our seasonal staff goes up at probably another 25. But part of your question is why did I start it? And I know mm -hmm. your passion for you know for Cush. Uh -huh. um, my passion was being inclusive. Why should this beautiful waterfront access that we have not be available to everyone? And there is people in New London who live 200 yards from the water but have never been on it before. Right. So the emphasis of this foundation is to, is to teach anybody who wants to be on the water, uh, get them on the water, learning and having fun, but also integrating it in the curriculum. And, but it's, it is um, aimed at children. Not, not adults. Children of all ages. Right. Um, <laughs> our, our core kind of classroom is in New London. We teach classes K through actually 16 through college. Okay. Um, our core is kind of the, you know, that, the middle school level. But we also teach it to sailing to adults and marine science and adventure sports. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah. So you've expanded it a lot since uh, I was very much involved. Absolutely. So, um, so what is its primary mission? What do you say? You know, Grayson, we say we're building brighter futures through adventure education. But what that really means is we are an ocean adventure education program. Mm -hmm. We engage students in experiential learning that builds self-confidence, teamwork, and leadership skills. And Use those are really important. Oh, yeah. yeah At can, a young age. Absolutely. And we're doing it with sailing, marine sciences, and adventure sports as platforms. Mm -hmm. But what makes it unique is we're actually integrating into the curriculum in probably 100 schools where we're actually teaching STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, getting them out in the water. Oh, and those are courses that uh, schools are lacking right. and are so important to the future of this country. And I see it as an environmentalist. I see what you're doing as by making it fun and having you explain what goes on in the water, you're creating very young environmentalists. Absolutely. And so I applaud you for that. Well, one of the things that very early on with, you know, with our 14 kids in the first year, we decided to say, what are our core values? And despite having 4,700 kids, our core values remain the same. Our first one is being inclusive being inclusive of everyone who wants to get out of the water, irregardless of their financial means. The That's second right. one is experiential, uh, experiential hands-on learning. What makes NEST so unique is every child is actually getting in the water underneath, experiencing, you know, picking up a horseshoe crab or learning to sail, feeling themselves, but getting out and, and, and getting out and doing the it. The classroom is in the water. Absolutely. We call it a classroom without walls. 
Um, oh, that's great. To be out there. And I, I guess one thing, you know, we're curing NDD, nature deficit disorder, by, by getting them out of the water. <laughs> that's great. So, so the third core value is really personal discovery. Um, we're trying to push these children in ways that they haven't been pushed before. So many kids in New London don't know how to swim, but we're putting life jackets on and getting them in the water, overcoming that fear. Mm -hmm. And recently we made a commitment with uh, Dr. Rivera, the superintendent of New London Schools, that in five years, every child that graduates from New London High School will know how to swim. And that's, that's horrific. That's a really important Major skill Major thing. Because if they don't, by that age, they're too afraid almost. Exactly. Exactly. And their <clears throat> adults have more fear exactly. than children. You children bet. don't know to fear. <laughs> you bet. You bet. And, and the fourth one, Gracelyn, is really one of the reasons why I think you asked me on the program is stewardship. Yes. And we're talking stewardship of the environment, but we're also talking stewardship of their own towns and communities. So when you live 100 yards from the water and you've never been on the water before and you gain enjoyment from it and you're learning how to protect it and be, be stewards or ambassadors of that waterfront, you then take pride. Mm -hmm. And then if you get pride in your community, some of the other things that may not be as going as well take a different, take a different matter. Right. So stewardship has been a fundamental uh, core value. So these four core values, whether it's you know, 12 to 14 kids or 4,700 and expanding across seven locations, has been how we've been managing the foundation. That's amazing. And, and I think it's, you've been, uh, when did you start this? Uh, we became an independent foundation in 2004. I became president in 2008. Um, so we've had a fair amount. In 2008, we had... I want to say 200 students. We were a three-month summer program, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had the opportunity to buy our wonderful facility in, in Stonington. You know, mm -hmm. the Garbo's on old the, on the water. On the water. Um, but as a former banker, it quickly realized, and we knew this before, but being somewhat joking, that we only had three months of revenue, but 12 months of real expenses, <laughs> given <laughs> given the mortgage. So we we wanted to take our curriculum and follow the schools. And that's how first schools come to us for day trips and coming. And then with, within New London, we actually have five different locations in New London to get closer to the schools. So you take it to the school, and then in the summer, the school comes to the water? It can be both. Or um, both. Okay. You know, in the, in the academic year, many schools, we partner with probably over 100 schools, come to our location. But as the partnership gets deeper and we know the kids, and especially in New London, we then actually establish what we call satellite locations. Okay. Um, and these satellites are at uh, Greens Harbor Beach with us running New London Community Boating. We now manage the Mitchell College varsity sailing team and their waterfront activities. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, classroom at Ocean Beach, which is a, just a wonderful facility. Yes, Our yes. eco tours through Ocean Beach are fabulous. Okay. And then we have classrooms at Benny Dover Jackson Middle School, uh, the Science and Tech Magnet High School. So um, talk about some of the programs that you offer, the specific ones. You've mentioned different ones, but um, talk a little bit about each one. Sure. Um, well, sailing. Uh, we have a broad array of, of sailing classes, from Optimus to, uh, to 420 Racing to Sonars, which is great for adults, but the full ramification of all different types of sailing. So for people who don't know sailing, the, the Optimus are boats. They're types of boats, right. <laughs> and the four, <laughs> yeah, and, and the you're four being four very times. Optimus by sailing it, so, you know. Um, <laughs> And so those are diff three different types of boats, and you have those boats available to the students. To the students throughout the year. Great. And, and so learning to sail, but also teaching geometry through sailing. You know, okay. you, you can talk about the shape of a triangle in the classroom, but you know, now say to get you to go faster in the sailboat, understanding the area of the triangle, base times height divided by two, that you learn in the classroom means a lot different on the water, and they tend to, tend to learn it a little bit more. Right, because it's applying that, right. that geometry and that knowledge. And then they're feeling when they're on the water with that triangular sail and they turn it a different direction to the wind, they, exactly. they get it. Strange things can happen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have a wonderful and broad array of marine science programs, um, starting from age four all the way up through, you know, through high school and college. And mm -hmm. um, that's studying the aquaculture, the wildlife, um, and getting and getting students out to experience you know the wonderful nature. There are uh, so many different programs that are getting them to explore, to understand, mm -hmm. and obviously the stewardship and the marine environment and, and marine debris have been hot topics in those conversations. Right. And courses. Right. And then finally, we have adventure sports. 
which, you know, surfing, uh, kayaking, windsurfing, uh, all of those teach, teach children. What are those boards that you stand up on? Stand up paddle boards. That's another paddle one. Paddle boards. I did that. I rented them from Ness. Very good. With a friend, and we went out, and we, we did stand up paddle boarding one afternoon. Do, do you make it all the way through? You didn't fall in or anything? I didn't. Good. You know, it, but it was, it was not a very uh, windy day. So the, there was not a lot of uh, wa wave action mm -hmm. to um, throw off your balance. But I also used to water ski as a kid. I'm sure you're and, aware of it. And ice skate and uh, doing a lot of things that require balance. So my body was used to trying to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> but Graceland, all of those courses are mm -hmm. platformed for the leadership skills, teamwork. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about the courses that we work in partnership with the, with the teachers, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, all of these courses, the Next Generation Science Standards, the Common Core, Ocean Literacy, they're all ways to have the students experience learning from a different, from a different way. Okay, so um, you talked about Give some examples. You talked about a debris project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one mentioned the, it. Yeah, one of the things that's I think really important in terms of stewardship and the environment is giving the students a, an understanding of really the challenges that we have out mm -hmm. there in, mm -hmm. in terms of the ecology, and it, it every one of us has something that we can do to help all of us protect this environment. I mean, you know, you and I can be in the same boat and I can be, you know, different infirmities or what have you, or slightly balling red, or all those stereotypes that you get don't make a difference. Because right. what we're trying to do is get the boat back safely. But when you think about, you know, taking a piece of trash, which is a, you know, a, a, a plastic bag and having it flow off the boat, Mm -hmm. You know, how long do you think that lasts out there? And we ask the students, and you get ranges from, oh, it dissolves instantly in salt water to, you know. You and how long is it? About 20 years. Wow. Uh, that, that little flimsy bag hangs that, around for 20 years. That little flimsy bag. And don't animals sometimes eat it? They because do. Because they think it's food. They and do. And so then they, they die. They die. And when you think about and this is one of the courses mm -hmm. that you think about the implications of the food chain. Mm -hmm. You and I are out sailing, a plastic bag goes into the water, a fish eats it and dies, or a fish eats it and somehow gets, you know, other, uh, other debris, you know, cigarette mm -hmm. butts can last 10 years, et cetera, that get into the food chain and, you know, change the, obviously changes the quality of and the livelihood of that, of that individual species. Right, and then we eat the fish. Right. So whatever they've eaten, we eat. Correct. And, um, and so we get pollution in our human bodies, a lot of it from marine life. Absolutely. It doesn't mean you have to stop eating it. It means you have to be careful what you eat because um, uh, the large fish, um, many of them, the big uh, fish, have eaten the smaller fish, and so they have more accumulated toxins exactly. than the little ones. Exactly. So it, it is, and by teaching this to kids, very young, you're taking away their fear of the water, but you're but also, it's also second nature, and they become, telling them why they they don't want to put stuff in the water. They become ambassadors. Mm -hmm. One of the other projects is uh, the Rosalia project, and we actually go through area beaches and picking up, you know, be it cigarette butts, be it glass, et cetera, and then through a website marine tracker, we help them figure out where it came from. So there's debris on the on the water that might be local, or the debris that travels many many miles. Yes, especially um, I sometimes go to the beaches over in uh, uh, Rhode Island, which are 20 minutes away, and um, because I like the surf action sure. of the, the actual ocean rather than uh, a, one that's broken up by a breakwater. And I know that some of that debris has come from hundreds of miles. Well, one of the really fun things we did uh, when the Volvo Round the World Ocean Racers were in Newport, mm -hmm. um, we took the STEM Middle School of the Benny Dover Jackson, the STEM STEM School of the Benny Dover Jackson Middle School, up to Newport to see these Volvo Ocean Racers, and this is the pinnacle of sailing. I mean, these mm -hmm. boats are just machines, and to show these these you know these children the teams of the sailing around the world, the the girls were so amazed at the women's team. Yes. And they, you know, they, they want, you know, can I do that? And you can give them the message that, you know, if you work hard and try, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And so providing those roles.
role models, but what was really interesting is that when you talk to those racers, you know, they're going around Cape Horn, they have 60 feet of waves going up and down and wind, et cetera, but what they really were fearful of, and these boats go quite fast, 15 to 20 knots potentially, in the middle of the night, hitting some form of ocean debris. Right, because it can, it can put a hole in your boat and you can sink. Exactly, and you can't, you can't see it coming. It's, you know, it's not on the radar. Not on the radar, very, very scary. And, and those of us, or those of those racers that have been around the world, it's seeming like islands of debris. Yes, they're and, vortexes. Exactly. There's five major vortexes yes. that are um, like floating islands of debris where the currents have brought them into this one, uh, these islands. And ha is anybody doing anything about those? I think they're trying. I, they I, talked about trying to wait, find ways to reuse that debris and get it out of there. And get it out, but obviously it's expensive and it's in very remote parts, except you know from the tsunami. You know that's mm -hmm. all migrating and you know does oh. wind on everybody's beaches. But you know going back to our little yes. program with with these kids, but we're teaching them respect. We're mm -hmm. teaching them that it does make a difference and that when, you know, they see someone, you know, not taking care or throwing a piece of trash out, it does have implications. Yeah, throwing a bottle, throwing a can, throwing a, a plastic piece of anything because plastic, Absolutely. not just plastic bags, but you find toothbrushes and paintbrushes. Well, even, and it, all even, sorts in of the, even in your toothpaste, it just now got uh, regulated out, micro little plasma, I, not pronouncing it right, but tiny, tiny things that helps the consistency that doesn't do anything to the quality of the toothpaste, but then would get into the water system. Fish will then think it's bait, or, you know, little plankton to eat, mm -hmm. and then they'll eat, and that's obviously not nutritious. No. And once again, it's just a byproduct of, you know, something that we need to stop. Our plasticized world. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you talked about uh, an eco brick project. Ah, I, this is actually one of my favorite projects. <laughs> um, the, the New London New London students, along with our AmeriCorps members, we have ten AmeriCorps members working okay, with us. Just stop and explain what AmeriCorps members are. AmeriCorps members, it's a, it's it's a program sponsored. I think it was started by Clinton. That's not dissimilar to Peace Corps, but these okay. are these are you know college graduates largely who are giving one year service to work with Ness. It started to end poverty, but we're unique that we're using these AmeriCorps members to help us in the classroom in terms of education. And okay. they're with the students, you know, basically all day, and, and many students come with us in the summer, but they're great role models and they're wonderful individuals. Mm -hmm. And so we, this Echo Brick project, Eco Brick project, is they're taking, finding plastic bottles mm -hmm. and taking dry trash and, and basically turning them into bricks. And they're trying to collect as much trash as they can from anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, from uh, river cleanups, ocean river cleanups, cleanups, beach cleanups. Uh, working with stores for their recycling, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and they're calling it eco bricks because we're going to make a park bench for Ocean Beach out of these bottles as a way to raise awareness for, uh, for the ecology. That's great. It's fun, and it's 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 taking something that is seemingly a you know a, not a mundane task, but bringing it up to give you know more life to make it. To make it fun, to, you know, when you go and see, my, here's my park bench that I made out of out of trash and our eco bricks, mm -hmm. um, and it sends a message. Well, and it also sends a message of how long this trash lasts. Yes. Because if you can make a park bench out of it, <laughs> it's going to be there for a while. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, you have in school, after school, and homeschool programs. Yes. Tell us about those. Well, homeschool is 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 is, is a neat program where various uh, families that are teaching their their children at home come to us for individual programs, and that's mm -hmm. you know it's 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 fun, creative, get a diverse group. It's quite a quite a movement here, and it's something that Ness is very happy to do in terms of helping them with the curriculum being created. Um, in terms of the after school programs, you know, be it going out on the water sailing or kayaking, it's another way to keep the curriculum uh, fun. And for after school program, as you know, in some of these mm -hmm. cities, bad things happen after school when they don't have things Parents to do. Parents at home, yes. Right. And so, so. Yeah, that's, that's largely how we started with the schools. Um, our first foray into New London was an after school program where they came to Ness. And then we developed deeper relationships. Um, you, you have quite a few years of experience now. Can you tell us a little bit of um, what you, how you hoped you would impact students' lives and what you've observed from some of those that have been with you for a while? 
You know, um, I'm president, but also full-time volunteer. Mm -hmm. And obviously a lot of it, as you know from your you know, nonprofit, a lot of it's fundraising. But what I found is that the reason why I do it is the impact you see on the students coming off the water. Um, I mean, there are countless stories. Uh, a girl who had never been on the water before and this, the lesson was design a cardboard boat. And so not only she'd been on the water before, she was kind of afraid of it, but then she designed a cardboard boat, kind of push her out and the boat is floating, but she's there, and the, and the, the magic, the wonder is like, wow, look what she did, look what she created. Look on her face was probably amazing. Yeah, I mean, from panic to, gee, I can do this. Yes. And it's that, it's that kind of empowerment, that kind of feeling a child coming out of a comfort zone, and just, you know, to be able to do it and to say they can. I mean, when we talk about Ness and being inclusive, we're naturally thinking about you know, students, you know, certainly New London, up in Norwich, et cetera, they may not have the financial resources of others. But, you know, sailing and what we're teaching and surfing can be equally as empowering and learning for those, those, para, those kids who are coming and paying the full tuition in terms mm -hmm. of their self-confidence, et cetera. So I think it's a, it's a great equalizer, and it's really all about the kids, um, each child at a time. And it helps bring the community together, too, because there's not a big division between the haves and the haves nots. Right. It's everybody's in the water, and they're all doing the same, getting the same message. So that's really terrific. In our summer program, we also have scholarships. And one very close friend of, of, of mutual close friends' mm -hmm. daughter came up to the parents and said, Mommy, I want a scholarship, because that person, I don't know what it is, but I want a scholarship. <laughs> And, you know, we're happy to be able to try to raise money to do that because, once again, use of the water, understanding the ecology, the marine environment, knowing about that plastic bag, that shouldn't be a financial impediment. That mm -hmm. should be something that we should all be having an opportunity to do. And be part of the, you're making it part of the students' regular education as well so that right. you're bra you've broadened the reach of your organization very rapidly by um, providing these services to the schools. Right. And so that, um, I applaud whoever's genius or um, whatever motivated you to go in that direction. No, well, thank you. I mean, it's part of it, you know, there was some pressure that you may remember that maybe we should form our own school, charter, magnet, whatever form. And mm -hmm. we felt pretty strongly that being a partner with a math teacher in the seventh grade and using our vehicle to be able to do that, to help his or her lesson plan explain it in a different way. You know, ki kids, I have dyslexia. I'm not learning, you know, kids aren't learning the way I did in kind of an ivory tower in a book. Mm -hmm. But to be out on the water or underneath it, taking that lesson plan that you had in a classroom with walls mm -hmm. and collaborating with our classroom without walls individually makes a big, big difference. So that's why we, that's why we grew. Well, and I always learned in retrospect that I learned best by doing. Right. And because it wasn't an abstract theory. It was, oh, I need to be able to add this and understand that in order to get the answer to this or to be able to do that. So I think when you can uh, apply those, uh, the teachings uh, of a school in a real life on the water situation, you need to calculate how long it's going to take you to get from here to China and what turns you need to make right. on the open water where you can't necessarily consult your your um, yeah we haven't taken a boat there. to Ch we haven't taken a boat to China yet although some of our program <laughs> directors would probably want us to in terms of that but I do think it it, it really is making it making it relevant mm -hmm. and working with the teachers many teachers report that you know be it buoyancy or a wave theory that mm -hmm. after taking one of our courses the lights come back on quote right. unquote for they the, get it for the, they get it and they uh, they they come back and understanding the lesson more than they did before okay we have about five more minutes so what I'd like you to do is uh, talk about Ness's plan for the future and then finish with how people can get involved sure well our plan for the future um, we want to continue working with schools that, you know, we have significant relationships with 100 schools, but, you know, in our satellites moving to other areas, Graceland, maybe we have a relationship building in Hartford. We want mm -hmm. to be able to make our program accessible and try to get, continue with the financial aid, but continue also working with those, you know, quote unquote, full pay programs mm -hmm. to, to really build and deliver our curriculum in a, in a unique way. So Ness will continue to try to grow that way and expand uh, in partnership with those, with those schools in other areas. 
And how do you fund all of this? Because the, you can't do all of this with government funding, well, especially not these days. Well, and we've done zero of, with government funding other than uh, part of AmeriCorps program has a grant associated with it. So mm -hmm. a lot of our funding has been the kind generosity of individuals and some foundations that believe in what we're doing. We're just starting now thinking about government funding and, mm -hmm. and working through that process. Mm -hmm. But it's, a, it's heavy lifting. But it also, one thing that we're really spending some really quality time on is, is outcomes, defining our outcomes. How are, the, how are the students' lives being changed, both quantitatively but also qualitatively in terms of, in terms of their skills? And that's mm -hmm. something that's very, very important, one of our highest priorities. Well, tell us, tell people how they can get involved, either as sponsors, donors, or with their children, um, or with a school. Yeah, I think the best way to find out more about NEST is to go to our website, and it'll be pictured on the bottom of the screen. The website is nessf.org, New England Science and Sailing Foundation.org. In terms of getting involved, so many different ways of getting involved. We depend on volunteers helping us out. Um, obviously, financial support is important, but also being coming down and stopping by and seeing what we're doing. There are many people who stop by and have, you know, hey, I'd like to get involved, and here's how I might be able to help. You know, a retired math teacher came by the other day and said, hey, I might be able to help you with, with this. So we are a community-based organization. While we're in Stonington, we're trying to make impacts on other communities, and we want the communities to be proud of us because we're doing it for the communities and each individual child that takes our program, helping them improve one child at a time. And you have something in the summer called Eco Tours? Oh, we do. We do. At Ocean Beach in Alwife Cove. And if you've never been there, it's, I haven't, so I'll it's fabulous. It. Kayak tours um, right through Ocean Beach. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful, is a wonderful park in New London. A really a tremendous resource that everybody should know about and take advantage of. And, and we'll, you know, talk about ecology, talk about, you know, the plant life and, and everything through that uh, wonderful little estuary. That's great. Well, I, ad, I'm, uh, I really admire what you've done, how fast it's grown, that you're um, still looking healthy. <laughs> you're not worn out. I don't know. I can't tell, you know, <laughs> losing more hair than I'd probably like, but that's probably obvious. <laughs> well, um, it's in a good cause. Right. And so I ask viewers to please keep um, New England Science and Sailing Foundation in mind and uh, go to their website, get involved, and um, make his day. Do something to uh, take the strain off of the founder and, uh, and expand the programs to other cities where there are many needy children who would enjoy being on the water and who we want to have be future environmentalists. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your attention and um, see you again soon. Thank you, Gretchen. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure.